these things, apparently to a fish, taste great. Oh my God, we gotta start blowing the tank more. So, and, gotta... and harder. You, you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm... cut. So that those the green pink ones are the one yeah. down lower on the right and the one really up high. Up high, the thick one. But in front of the green, uh, green oh yeah, the green planet. Yeah, that's another abro there. That's the reddish, the my reddish, my reddish one. brown yeah. one. So small. Yeah. So, but that's encrusted nicely. That and I. And we started a lot of this as frags, Joe. A lot of these were tiny frags. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. There's a big hydro wizard in the back corner. I've had that for 14 years now. Do you run out yeah, continuously? So, uh, pulsing, mostly. 85% so on. Pulse. And then down, the wave, to, down the wave. to 32. And it's timed at 1.7 seconds. And I do have the Abyss, the big 1200. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also going in like I used to do with the aggravating flatworms. I go with the, Water. with the hose. Do you think it's the pressure or do you think it's the RO? So if you went in with salt water, yeah. the hose with pressure, you would knock some off. Right. How hard do you have to hit coral with? I, I hit them. I hit them pretty hard. So what I'll do is I'll sweep the coral first to get the polyps to close up, and then I can hit them hard. And then what you want to do underneath. is go under. Underneath. Yeah. Yeah. You want to flush them. Up. If I stop pursuing them, this tank crumbles. So like I remember I used to have that nice big yellow fan of turbine areas like five six years ago. It slowly started disappearing. I'd get them in from other aquariums, put them in. I'd put them in holding tanks behind the scenes attached to this tank. I'd lose them. So like if you look at that post lapora, that big colony there, see the white skeleton underneath? If I don't hose out that coral on a regular basis, that entire coral gets eaten in like three weeks. How often are you blowing blown oral? I'm going in once a week now. Diving once a week, scrubbing, tweaking, pruning, frag I've been fragging a lot lately. I'll, I'll go from coral to coral that I think needs. The entire tank hose. Yeah. yeah. It probably ends up being 20 gallons, 100 to 20. So here's your coral head, right? So like that coral head, that acro, doesn't want to be dipped in fresh water. And these things have very low tolerances to osmotic pressure changes. So you create this little bit of this miniature world of fresh water. The osmotic pressures really get to these guys and they bail. And the minute you turn off that hose, the salt water comes back in your, and your coral's sitting in salt water again. Right. 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 So it's not a fresh water dip. Right. Right. But you're creating this micro environment of fresh right. water right. that right. everything goes. Agitation. Ah, this is brutal. So what I did with the flatworms prior to the tank reset was I would go in with the fresh water hose, right? right? I would go in on a regular basis. I got way ahead of that curve so that I would rarely go in with the fresh water hose anymore. Right. That's what allowed these white bugs to actually increase. So if I have a coral that's really struggling, if I pull that coral, I'll spray that rock down and I don't put a coral back in that spot. Right. You playing a lot of hop around the rosy with There's holes? A, for some, yeah. Like acros and stuff, I can, it, it, it's pretty solid. The stylos and stuff, I can hose them out enough that it's, it's not really an issue. What do you call them besides them? <laughs> it's them. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a science name? It, it, it's, it's a type of amphipod, but I don't, I don't have a species ID on them yet. I found colonies in the front left island that had actually eaten flatworms. Yeah. And they slowly are creeping up the branches, but the branches are still healthy in the top, and I'm seeing root tips, which to me didn't make sense. Then there's another colony, uh, this is called Magnificent, like the green one. Yeah. We love that colony. One day I get there, it was right before you came, and half of it is all gone. Mm -hmm. One day. There's right. flatworms inside, infesting it from inside out. That colony had little to low flow. Is there a correlation? So you design a tank and you install it, and it's got X amount of flow, right? right? And then all, all the corals are growing. It's like a, a, you have a, a big room that's open space. And then you start putting up Oh, I'm going to section off this part of the room. So now you're not getting the proper airflow, and you know, right. it's a, it's affecting that flow. 
So now the corals are obstructing the flow, exactly. And so, like, you've got it, like, just as much as you increase calcium and magnesium and stuff over time, what worked in the first two years won't work in the fifth year. So the, the, the success leads to failure. Yeah, or the success leads to adjustment. Correct. Yeah, so with cool. the aqua-eating flatworms, when I first realized I had them, yeah. that was a terrible day. Yeah. So my friend Fernando at Scripps, University, uh, Scripps Institute out in La Jolla, California, he had the aqua-eating flatworms. Yeah. These were new to science. If you study a particular thing, yeah. And there's a new species. Oh, this is the greatest thing ever. Like, you're yeah, like, exactly. this is, so you, she was you like, you she was, she, meanwhile, we're like, we just want to kill these things. Yeah. She wanted to study these flatworms intact. But they're, you sneeze on them and they fall apart. He would take a piece of acro off, put it in a dish, and then pipette RO water to agitate the worm to get it to dislodge. Right. It would settle into the petri dish, and then he could give this intact, healthy worm. That's when I said, oh, 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 I'm oh. gonna do that on a bigger scale, uh, but I'm too lazy to do all the RO, so I just use the municipal fresh water. Oh my God, so Joe, the, what are you doing? You're, you're, so the, yeah, so the, so against, so, so the, so the guys, staff cut, would, cut, the, cut, don't hear, no. the staff would walk by and it's I'd be in there, minutes. I'd be in there, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd be in there watering my, um, like, and they'd be like, <laughs> Joe's freaking losing Wait, it. Is like, it at least he's like, like a he's like watering his garden and he's underwater. Is it a python hose or is it like one of those? No, it's a garden hose, like from Ace Hardware. When I first went in and started hosing them, it was like a snow globe. But all the fish came over and I thought, oh, and they loved them. No way. It was like crack for these fish. So what happens is a lot of these like nudibranchs and stuff like that invest a lot of energy in toxins, right, for safety. These guys aren't gonna waste energy in toxins because they were relying on camouflage. So initially I was doing two times a week and for two times a week for a long time, it was like snow globe time, right? And then it was just like, I went in two times a week, and the second time I went in that week, there wasn't that many. So, so I said, okay, we'll go down to once a week. How, what stage do you feel when you were doing that before you took the tank down, right? Yeah. What, where do you feel you were at, like controlling wise? No, if I went in every three months with the hose, I'd see maybe a dozen worms. That's it. Come off. Yeah. That's so nothing. so you got to get ahead of that reproductive curve. Like, right. you're, like you're saying. Is those white spots new growth? All new growth. Okay. Yep. And I just started fragging it. So there's the two little nubs underneath it. Yeah, those, yeah, yeah. those are that coral. So you want to create the levels. So like this whole ridge here with the, the green post, uh, the green stylos, the pink post lepores, the yellow parietes. So I've started fragging them and place, placing those frags around within a you know, a short time, that whole ridge becomes right, right. a much more natural looking. Yeah, this will look cool. The, the green stylo that I took from here, after I fragged off the living parts, the skeleton was 52 pounds. Holy shit. So a lot of these I spawn and grow. This one started out as two polyps. These guys need a lot of food. And little or no light. Correct. That's why these are doing so Preferably much Preferably no light. Yeah. Or ambient light. Um, so, so most of the main lights are off right now. So just the 400s are on. The center blues are on. Uh, the main daylight bulbs are off. So this is a 500 watt, it's off right now. So I do a, some lanthanum chloride. There's two Fosban reactors, some uh, GFO reactors down there. The lanthanum chloride is, is doing the heavy lifting. I like to use the Fosban and the GFOs for removing the, what I call the unknown nasties. Um, there's 10 gallons of ESV carbon in a chamber over here. That's the Carlson surge device up there. There's two sand filters. You're, run, one, you're running the carbon 24 seven, Joe? Yeah, yeah. I change that about every three weeks. Yeah. It's about 10 gallons. Yeah. Yep. One of the things we've been thinking through is like having a sand filter and a coral reef tank, does it make sense? Because we have to, you have to back flush it. Sure, oh, like absolutely. How, like, doesn't that waste a lot of good water and nutrients and things that you need here? Well, mine are tied into, we've got this six inch pipe that's tied into our backwash loop. I can gravity feed to this sand filter 
uh, fresh water. Yeah, you know, if I'm gonna do a water change, I backwash with the tank water. If I'm not gonna do a water change, I backwash you, with the you, fresh so you're water. You're balancing out the. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go plug that one I'm in. Plug it in. Hang out here one sec. Which one? Which bulb do you like? I'm using uh, my daylights are the Sunmaster Cool Deluxe. And I just got some uh, blue halides in from um, Tulio and Joy. So Joe, I, it's great to be back again yep, after that uh, very nice Lyra Christmas dinner. Thank you. Oh yeah, we're a pleasure to host it for sure. Um, we came back really to see some some things because there aren't that many people that manage 20,000 gallon industrial systems. Yeah. Um, you're managing a lot of the same issues that we're going through. We like to come here to check Joe's temperature on how he's handling things so we can learn ourselves. The one thing that we were talking about uh, was pests. I know I know y you have uh, them, they are and them. you've dealt with the other thems. Yeah, the flatworms, yeah. after eating flatworms, yeah. yes. Convince me not 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 to, 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 to stay on this path and, and, and just manage this. Yeah, you'll end up with a much stronger tank if you work through it. Uh, I think a lot of times too many people dismantle the system when they b run into a bit of a headache. Are you and doing the same blowing for the flatworms as you are for them? Yeah, my goal there is just to disrupt that nest. They're not laying eggs there, but they have carry their eggs and have direct development. And so I'm just trying to disrupt that whole breeding colony and disperse and disrupt them. These white amphipods are, are brutal. They'll hit any SPS, LPS. Um, have you lost the pieces, SPS pieces that just Gone or, or, um, or if I didn't in, intervene, yeah, they would. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, sometimes I've pulled the colony out, uh, dipped it in revive just to dislodge them. Yeah, do they come off with? In the yeah, they yeah, definitely they do. don't like it. Yeah, okay. and it will kill them. It just takes a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, but my goal is to dislodge them, get them off that colony, and then put that colony back in a separate location. Coral quarantine. How careful are you now? Um, process length. For me, especially if we're just dealing with frags mostly yeah. uh, versus like the wild colonies, um, a lot of times these bugs and pests are in the base. So often whatever base they come in on, I'll remove that uh -huh. base. Right. Um, so you're just dealing with live tissue, maybe replant that onto something else. These amphipods, definitely something, they, you can kill them with interceptor. Uh, so that, that's another good process to do. Um, these things just fly under the radar so much that I think a, a lot of things maybe are just being misdiagnosed as something else. But what and do you, you think happened 20 years ago when we were growing corals in the 90s, the Shimer days and Varga? Sure. Do you think we had these pests and we didn't even know about them? Yeah, I, I'm definitely convinced we had the aquating flatworms back in the day because I had set up a 1,400 gallon tank at New York Aquarium in Coney Island. So you didn't worry back in the day, you didn't worry about tip down problems. You're always worried about base up. Oh, yeah. So I'm convinced because you could break those branches off and replant them elsewhere in the tank and they would flourish. And it's like, was it flow? We'd be looking at water. We would be looking at everything else. So I'm convinced aquaweeding flatworms have been in the industry since the early 90s. They were just hard to see. And I'm convinced maybe not as much as the flatworms, but that these white amphipods are the cause to a lot of issues because when you look at the tissue, when they're getting agitated and the, the corals are retracted, and oh, that coral's not opening up again, there's something irritating it. Yeah, it's them, and, but you don't see them. Right. And they really fly under the radar, so. What, what's going on with uh, your water changes? Are you still using natural seawater here? Are you using a lot of ESV product? Yeah, so yes, I do use the natural seawater for it is low and everything reef related. Everything. everything. Uh, so if I'm, but if I'm only doing a five percent water change, it's negligible on the tank, and I can easily. It doesn't really impact my, you know. If I do a twenty percent, I might see a drop in some things, and I'll just bump it up with more magnesium and more calcium and stuff like that. But those bigger changes are less often, 
uh, but they, they do happen. We've been giving back to the community and helping schools. And, Great. And Bob has been uh, instrumental in getting product and helping these guys too. Nice. For us. So yeah. it's, yeah, really a, nice. Yeah, and, I, and we need to, and that's a great, you know, you're in a position to, to help out, and that, that's great because we need to raise that next generation yep. of uh, biologists and aquarists and naturalists. And yeah, all that is greatly appreciated. And in the future, we will be uh, collaborating, I guess, more on lights, equipment, and we will be coral banking with you, and when we get some yeah, yeah, coral, that's... we'll give you some pieces. And... Cool. Yeah, that's that's all good stuff, and that's that's you know that's what the hobby was built on. That's what it was built on. Yeah, I uh, thanked everybody. I thank you, Joe, for for oh, inviting great. us back good to and have you guys checking here. out your equipment. Um, again, we use same companies: Abyss, Panther Ray. Yeah, they're all they all come through the commercial aquariums and uh, and help us all out. Yep, yep, they're tremendous supporters here. So yeah, yeah, great. So, yep. Thanks. All right. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Okay.